So what I've done, I've just taken some scrap coax and uh, stripped and um, I've soldered together how you would normally construct one of these uh, coax antennas and what you do, you strip away some of this outer core, leave it exposed there, a couple of millimetres. Um, the inner core again, you cut away but uh, leave some of this insulation here so you're not touching and what you have to do is go in there and tin and flood this outer braiding coax uh, of the uh, copper wire uh, with solder and just tin up the inner wire and you construct it like this but uh, it is uh, really really messy and something else you have to remember is the wavelength of this actually starts where that uh, outer braid starts so it's nothing to do with the um, protective sleeve here it's actually where the outer braid starts and you've soldered there so when you're talking about the smaller um, the higher frequencies and smaller measurements it's uh, actually quite tricky to do that so what I've come up with is actually using some metal tubing to replace that outer copper braiding and strip away and just use the inner core with its uh, insulation um, on the coaxial cable and feeding it through this uh, metal shield and it's a lot easier to get your measurements on this metal tubing than it is to uh, get it on the coax cable there especially when you're dealing with the higher frequencies so here's one of my uh, tubes cut exactly to size now that I'm happy with and it just fits over the top of uh, this inner core with its insulation and I haven't measured this part of it yet at all I've just cut it off so I've actually got plenty to play with and what we'll do is just uh, trim away to expose the amount of uh, inner core we actually want and then when we solder on to each other we don't have to worry about these moving because uh, the actual inner core soldered onto that outer tubing will actually hold them in place a lot like this here so what I do I cut them off a little bit longer than what I need and then each one I keep measuring and actually sanding down on this emery paper until I get it exactly how I want it now it's not a good idea to use any kind of grinding machine like a Dremel to do this because it's just too harsh and we're talking fractions of a millimeter so you just keep doing it until you get it to uh, as close as you possibly can so just to give you an idea it's taken me about uh, 20 minutes of cutting and uh, sanding to get these nine completed so it doesn't take that long at all you just got to really take your time and uh, just keep measuring it every time you give it a little sand these little tubes that we've made as uh, shields what I've done I've actually got a bit of uh, emery paper and just roughed up the sides so we're able to actually apply some solder to it and I've just tinned a little bit of solder on here and I'm holding this in the vise also put a little bit of uh, tin on this side and what we're going to do we're going to solder on I'm going to solder it on like this there you go and we can just go in and uh, straighten it up a little bit so what you want to do is just carry on until you get all nine of these all soldered together so what we're going to do now we're going to actually prep the SMA connector so we can uh, connect it to the bottom of our antenna so we can connect our antenna to our Wi-Fi card and what we're going to use is an SMA connector this is a female one now normally these are designed to be crimped on but uh, we're not going to do that we're going to uh, actually solder it on like this one here 
and this outer shield part which is normally crimped on the SMA connector is as near as damn it to the wavelength where we've cut off for these little shields so what you want, you want to get yourself a little piece of coax and uh, trim away this outer shield and you want the inner part of uh, the coax just long enough to reach the uh, bottom of the SMA connector so I can push it in there and it just stops round about here and if we trim that back a little bit and connect the little pin then it should line up exactly and connect inside there just like that one has there so we're going to expose a little bit of the end of this uh, inner core now when you're working with such small pieces of coax like this if you put a little cut around there and instead of pulling then you want to twist because if you pull you can end up pulling it out of the end here and then you need another piece of coax so give it a twist like so and we've got that exposed what we're going to do we're going to tin that up and tin the little pin here and we're going to connect those two up like so so just tin the end of this we don't want a lot of solder on there otherwise it won't fit in the pin try and angle that so you can see it on camera and I'm going to apply a little bit of heat to the outside of this pin just get a small amount of solder in there so we'll leave the pin actually in the clamp and again we're just going to heat up the side of that pin and insert this as it's uh, melted so we've got our pin soldered on to our coax cable so what you would normally do now is feed this uh, copper piece of tubing here over the top of the outer sh PVC sheaf of the coax until it uh, comes down here and then you would crimp it around here and this outer coax here would be making contact with this and also with the SMA connector here but what we're going to do is we're going to cut away most of this PVC sheaf just leave a little band there that will uh, help to hold this in place I'm going to uh, push down some of this braiding and then solder around the top so before we put this metal shim over the top of the coax I'm just going to put a little bit of solder around the top here just to tin so it's going to make it easier when we solder that coax on so I'm ready to fit this onto uh, the SMA connector now and I've just um, thinned this out a little bit the uh, PVC shield that's left just um, because it was just a little bit too thick for the connector so we're going to push it on and work our way down to here use a pair of needle nose pliers I'm just laying them on top here to put some force down and there we've got a nice tight fit you can trim away any loose bits of uh, copper here that are sticking out this copper braid and what we're going to do is trim a little bit of this copper braid away and push it down into here and then uh, we'll seal it with some solder so just work in stages and let it cool down each time because we don't want to be melting this uh, inner core so that's finished now that's all uh, tinned up around there and this shield is not going to come away anytime soon and of course we can still rotate this 
so we can screw it into our Wi-Fi card quite easily. So what we're going to do now is just uh, cut away some of this plastic shield here in this inner core and we're just going to connect it up to our antenna like we have with the rest of them. This is actually going to be soldered onto the side of that shield and cut away just so we've got about three millimeters so we can solder that one onto this shield here. So I just want to extend the end of the antenna here. I just want to solder a piece of copper on there so we've got a quarter wavelength coming out of the top. So I'm just going to solder this piece of copper on here and then we'll measure and trim it after. So that's now trimmed and cut to a quarter wavelength. Now I have experimented with this antenna and I've also tried a half wavelength but uh, the quarter wavelength seems to work best. When I put a half wavelength on the end of here it uh, didn't perform as well as uh, the one with the uh, quarter wavelength on. So to protect the antenna I've got some plastic tubing here that I got uh, from the plumbing section of my local hardware store and it's got a 15 millimeter diameter and I've just cut this one to length and to actually go over the top to block the top off I've got these screw covers now normally what you would do is screw a screw into a piece of wood or something through the hole in there and then this cap would go over the top and cover it up so I've just cut the top off and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hot glue that into the end of the antenna so it will look something like that I've also gone I've roughed all this up with a little bit of um, wire wool because I am going to paint this one so here is the antenna it's all finished now I've sprayed it in silver the epoxy putty around there it's holding it in nice and tight so uh, I think all that's left to do now is to give it a quick test. So with the stock dipole antenna we seem to be getting around the 68% mark so it's not bad, seems pretty stable. It's just dropped down a little bit so what I'm going to do is connect up the coax dipole antenna we've just built and see what kind of performance we get from that. There you go, straight away, much, much stronger signal. Almost in the 90s, is in the 90s now. I'll just let it settle down. It seems to have settled down at about 88%. So, well worthwhile building this antenna. So, I hope you enjoyed that, and if you got something out of it, please give it a big thumbs up. And I'll catch you next time.